everybody. It's me, Moody Boo, and I'm back with a top 10 list this time. <clears throat> I just had too many ambers to do an eight great perfumes that I loved. Too many ambers that I loved. I almost did um, two eight great perfumes, and I decided that's too much. Let's just shorten that list. If I need to do a second one, I'll do a second one. So I've got three honorable mentions I want to mention just very quickly. I'm not going to say much about any of these three at all. In fact, I don't have time to say much about any of them, to be really honest. So the first one I've had for years, and it was one of my uh, rediscoveries, and I love this perfume. I hadn't reached for it in years, and up until recently. And I'm in love with it all over again. And this is by Costume National, and this is Scent Intense. Now this is just amber and some myrrh and patchouli. Those are the main three. It's just a slightly almost peppery, um, uh, earthy kind of an amber accord. Now just to make sure everybody's clear on this, um, I'm sure most of you are, but amber is not actually a note. <clears throat> it's an accord. Amber doesn't smell like anything. So um, you have to bring notes together for your interpretation of amber. A lot of times that will involve, you know, some myrrh or some um, other resins or balms or balsams, I mean, and, and things like that with some vanilla, some earthy notes, maybe patchouli, something like that. But anyway, it's, it's just up to the perfumer's interpretation of what they think amber smells like. So, um, and for me, usually it's, it's a sweet, slightly spicy, almost slightly cold smell. Um, and that's kind of what I've noticed that a lot of ambers smell like in general. But a lot of them have some variances, which I'm really appreciating. And this is one of them. It's not a very sweet amber by any means, but it's still, it's beautiful. It's it's a very pretty perfume at a very reasonable price. And I don't know why more people don't talk about this one, but who cares? So anyway, that's honorable mention number one that I wasn't going to talk a lot about. So the next one on my list is a um, fairly new one to me, and it's by Rag and & Bone, and it's called Amber. And this one I haven't had very long, only a few months, so I haven't worked with it a lot. I had to walk away from it because I was rather disappointed the first week or two that I tested it. But now that I've come back to it, I'm appreciating it much more. Now it says on Fragrantica that it's just amber, but I think Rag and Bone's interpretation of amber, there's some vanilla in there, there might even be some florals in there. It's a very light, uplifting kind of an amber. Um, performance is okay on it. It's very pretty. Next up, last honorable mention. Now the last one honorable mention I'm going to talk about is by Frank or Franck Olivier and this is just amber. There, helps if I get the right side to you guys. So this is just an amber patchouli vanilla little labdanum I think is in there. And I think there's some citrusy fruits in there and uh, some sandalwood is in there. And, but the weird thing is in the deep dry down, I swear I get a slight chocolate note. I don't know. It's nowhere on the notes listed, but I am looking off of Fragrantica and they aren't always very accurate. So, I don't know, because I swear I smell a little chocolate in here. So, and the crazy thing is, I think I got this bottle for $15, and performance is really good on it, for me. So, and I think it's supposed to be geared towards men, but who cares? Next up, the 10. Now, I'm not going to put these in any particular order, because that's just too stressful for me. I have to spend a lot of time and my mind changes every time I wear a different perfume. It's like, would it be up the list a little more? Would it be down the list? So to me, I don't know. Right now, I feel like it's irrelevant to put it in any particular order. I think the, all 10 of these are fabulous. So next up. So this is a, a perfume from an independent perfume house and they're called Shirini and this is Amber Essential. Now I, I don't remember 
if I read a blog about it or if I saw a YouTube video about it, but I was so intrigued that I got a sample of it and then I popped for a full bottle. It's got this really cool wood top on there. It's really interesting. So the notes in this are uh, mandarin, bergamot, cardamom, rose, palmarosa, sage, vanilla, benzoin, hibiscus seeds, cedarwood, sandalwood, lab labdanum, and patchouli. Honestly, you just get a very bright, spicy kind of an amber. It's not real sweet, even with the benzoin and the vanilla in there at first. At first it's it's this very metallic, um, almost a warm stone kind of a smell at first. But when it dries down, it's crazy. I'm actually wearing it. When you put your nose right up to it, it still maintains that warm stone with some woods in there kind of a, a feel to it. But when you get a sillage from it, I keep getting whiffs of this very sensual, mature, um, softer black orchid by Tom Ford. It's weird, a less sweet, but they have the same blood type in in their projection, in what you what you um, smell in their projection. At least I do. That's what I get. Because here, no, but here, yes, it's. It's a cool perfume. It really is. And the price is really good on this. So that's Shirini um, Ombre Essential. It's good stuff. Performance is great. All right, number nine. And remember, these aren't in any particular order. They are, I'm just spouting off number nine so I know where the hell I am. The ninth one on the list is probably no surprise to anybody. And I just have a decant. Um, I went through one decant, and this is my second, and this is Dior Ombre Nui. This is a very peppery amber, and there's a little bit of rose, a little bit of citrus in there, but really for me, it's a sweet, peppery amber. It's a beauty. Performance on this is crazy uh, for me, of course. I keep saying that. Let's just put... Uh, a disclaimer out there whenever I'm talking about performance and da 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 and sillage and what a perfume is like just assume I'm talking about from my standpoint from now on so that I don't have to go in my opinion for me all the time even though I'm sure I'm gonna forget shortly after this and say it yet again but at least this disclaimer is out there so beautiful perfume if you haven't tried it, you should. It is gorgeous. Next, number eight. The next one on my list is by Roger Dove, and this is Amber. Now, this is a perfume, again, I had to walk away from <clears throat> and come back to. Um, when I first got it, now I did get, I like split a sample with a friend of mine. And so I didn't get but like two wearings of it. And I loved it. And then I bought a bottle. And then I didn't love it. I thought, really? This is what this kind of money looks like in a perfume? Hmm. Color me disappointed. But then when I came back to it about two, three months ago, I started noticing the nuances in it and that it really is lovely. Now, do I think it is worth the money? No, I don't. I think Roger Dove's prices are ridiculous. Unless there are gold flecks floating around in this bottle, there is no reason for those kind of prices with this kind of a perfume because there's several other, other perfumes that I have in the same vein that cost half as much, a third as much, and are as good. So, I'm sorry, but I don't agree with Roger Dove's prices. I don't agree with <clears throat> um, Clive Christian, um, those kind of luxury houses for um, charging that much when, like I said, man, Middle Eastern perfumes, they can make as quality of a perfume as this 
in a prettier package and charge a tenth of the price. So, but it is very pretty. It is very pretty and it performs great. It's amber and cocoa and vanilla and there's some citrus and sandalwood and patchouli and tonka. A lot of things, but honestly for me, I just get a slightly sweet ambery chocolate um, and in the deep dry down <clears throat> you do get a little hint of woods and florals and maybe some tonka in there but it's all about the chocolate vanilla and amber with a little bit of citrus in there it's it's very pretty very pretty and but I don't know that I would recommend um, this perfume I mean, it's got to be on my top 10 amber list because it is a beautiful perfume, but I am not recommending it to you because it's too expensive. So there, let the hate begin. Ah. Trolls are on the way. Send in the trolls. There's got to be trolls. Next. The next one is one of my favorite ambers of all time and that's Grand Soir by Mason Francis Curjon. This is just amber and benzoin and tonka and vanilla and labdanum. It's just this sweet, rich, thick, vanillic amber. It almost has a boozy note to it. It is beautiful. It's beautiful. Performance is crazy on this. I actually took a decant of this I had a decant before I started on in on the bottle. And I took that decant to Hawaii and I wore it in Hawaii and it was beautiful. Now it was just one spray. But when it bloomed in the, the humid heat, it was lovely. It was simply lovely. I did one spray, like I said, but damn, I'll be probably taking some more of this with me to Hawaii this year too. Why am I talking like this? What's the matter with me? I think sometimes my husband says I get stuck in a loop and I just say crazy crap. And it's almost like I need to bonk my head self upside the head in order to kind of start tracking again. I don't know. It's a weird thing. It's a weird thing. But he married me anyway. So it's on him. Next. This is another one of my all-time favorite amber perfumes. I had to put it on this list, but it's probably on everybody's amber list, but rightfully so. And I have several decants of this, and it's and I will get a full bottle. Amber Absolute by Tom Ford. This stuff is insane. It's sweet, it's incensey, it's woody, it's warm, it's rich. It's kind of dry and slightly powdery when you first spray it, but once that dry down happens, it just becomes this absolute gorgeous, sweet, slightly spicy, um, incense-y kind of an amber. I just, if you haven't smelled Tom Ford Amber Absolute, man, what you waiting on? It's gorgeous performance is insane on it. Insane. So be careful. All right, next up. I lost, see, if I don't say the number, I don't know where I am. I don't remember what number I'm on. Seven, six. Oh well, I'm just gonna keep going until I run out of perfumes on the mantle. How's that? Now this one is, uh, one I've already done a review on and talked a lot about, so I'm not going to talk a lot about it. But again, it was like Amber Absolute, Amber Nui. It had to be on this list. And that's by Jerobum Ombra. It's just vanilla and some Peru balsam and patchouli and incense and tonka. But it's blended so well that you just get this sweet, um, slightly earthy, slightly, um, almost a slight medicinal note in there at the very top. But once that dries down, it goes away and it just becomes this beautiful, sweet, slightly smoky amber. It's gorgeous and price is really good on this too. So performance is great. 
I love this house. I've sampled like two other perfumes from here and I'll probably be getting both of those. So there you go. Next. The next one is by Evity and this is called Amber Intense. And this is just amber, a popinax, some sage in there, and some sandalwood, incense, patchouli. This is just a beautiful perfume. But that doesn't really do it justice because that doesn't talk about the sweetness and the richness that it, it has going on. It's a fairly sweet amber. That note pyramid does not reflect what I smell in this, but I did not look this one up. It really is a beautiful, um, almost, a, almost a boozy note in there. Um, sweet, uh, balsamy kind of an amber. It's rich. It's unisex. All of these are unisex. And performance with this one is really good, too. I don't know why more people don't talk about Ebony. These perfumes are really pretty. So that's... Uh, Amber Intense. There's so many perfumes with the word amber or amber or something in them. I'm losing track. <sighs> Next. Now this one I got a sample of and I fell head over heels for it and had to get it. And that's Ellie Saab Essence Number no. 3 Amber. Now this is the one Fragrantica did not have. The notes were not accurate. The pyramid was not accurate. So I looked it up. The notes are patchouli, vanilla, labdanum, apopanax, ylang ylang, sandalwood, and jasmine. That makes sense. I don't even remember the three crazy notes they had on Fragrantica, but there was, I was like, why is it sweet? Why do I f smell florals, especially white florals in here? Which I am not a big fan of, but in this, it's beautiful. It's a very white floral sweet kind of an amber it's very unassuming and you know i know people are going to think i'm crazy but there's a part of this that reminds me a bit of ani by nishine i was testing this on one hand and i had been wearing ani that day and i was a little floored how they have some similarities. I haven't looked at the note pyramids to compare them or anything, but that doesn't always matter. Um, this is gorgeous. This is a beautiful, it's almost, it's almost a tropical um, amber. Um, I think because of the ylang ylang and the jasmine, but it's stunning, stunning. Performance is okay. It's, I get six to eight hours and it wears, you know, arm's length and then down a little closer. It doesn't become a skin scent, but it does become closer to you. Gorgeous perfume. Next. So the next one I'm going to talk about, I've had for quite some time. It's another rediscovery. I'm telling you, I rediscovered a lot of perfumes in the last six months to a year. So this one is <clears throat> Amber Loop by Rania J. This is a gorgeous perfume. I don't know why more people don't talk about some of these perfumes. Now, some of them used to be almost a little thing years ago, but then people forget about them. That's why I love doing these lists, is I can remind everybody how beautiful some of these perfumes we used to love are. Because we loved them then, we might love them now. You gotta check them out again. Don't forget about them. Don't send them to the Island of Broken Toys. It's not where they belong. There isn't an island for forgotten perfumes. If there is, send me. Just strand me there. And I'll be happy. There I go again. So this is labdanum and kayak and vanilla and some peru balsam and cloves and some oud and pepper. And what I love about this is it's very, it's a very Grand Soir, um, Mason, Mason Francis Kurjan kind of a perfume at first. It has that sweet, thick richness to the amber and the vanilla. But then when it dries down, it really does a crazy thing. It kind of becomes a sweet, woody, peppery kind of an amber. But it changes for me. It changes 180 degrees. So... 
that's one of the things I love about this perfume is that it is a perfume of many faces and I love that. Sometimes I just want to wear, that's why I love Hilde Soliani's because her perfumes, you know, they're what you see is what you get. But I do like a good face changer of a perfume, one that really throws me for a loop. Ah, <laughs> an amber loop. Next up, last up, actually. So here's number 10. The last one on my favorite Ambers list is by Beaucheron, and that's Amber d'Alexandrie. Now this is a pretty recent discovery, and I'm whack nut over it. Absolutely crazy about this perfume. I have worn it, I've only wore, had it for like a month, and in the last month, well shit, you can't even really tell how much I've worn it in the bottle, but I bet I've worn it. 10 times and that's crazy for me because I really rotate my perfumes a lot so this is amber and tobacco and vanilla and some benzoin and ambergris and labdanum and musk it's beautiful it really is a sweet uh, amber with a hint of tobacco gorgeous stuff performance is pretty good not too bad um, and price isn't bad as well. So that's it for my top 10 ambers um, for 2020. And I'll be back soon with some kind of crazy list, I'm sure. Thanks so much for putting up with me, everybody. Peace.